uh, governments and uh, institutions across the nation are on to addressing matters impacting on almost all the sectors as we mark another calendar in our democratic journey. Challenging institutions, capacities, as well as other means uh, being imposed. Limitations, but then the resilience is there for the people and leaders to march their way through soon enough on the ways to life and living. The coronavirus and its impacts is not just felt in the health sector. Its ripple effect is hitting the jobs as well as other areas of the workforce. Now, as at April this year, the International Labour Organization forecast uh, 305 mil uh, million job loss, with some saying Nigeria might also be that affected in that bracket. This administration has put in a number of opportunities to jobs as well as wealth creation, no doubt. What more do we need? And how is Nigeria brazing to this new phase? And what can the Nigerian agencies saddled with employment do in order to protect jobs and perhaps recreate jobs as we brace this new normal necessitated by COVID-19 in the country? Well, how about you stay with me the next half hour as I engage my guests at the end of affairs in employment and area of job security. You are allowed to take a guess. I'll be back in a moment. My name is Blessing Abu. Welcome to On The Spot. My guest was born on the 10th of October 1968 in the famous tourist city of Aragungu in Kirby State, Northwest Nigeria. He is a cardiologist by training and he was appointed principal medical officer in charge of Argungo General Hospital in Kebbi State from 2006 to 2010. He was head of department, Department of Medicine, Sani Yahaya Specialist Hospital, Birni Kebbi, Kebbi State. Now over the different period, his sheer hard work, valor and commitment to service had seen him venturing into the larger political space in 2011 to contribute to his own quota to our democratic governance. Having distinguished himself as an amiable and dynamic leader, an administrator with the sterling qualities of integrity, honesty, resourcefulness, hard work and patriotism, President Muhammad Buhari appointed him the Director General of the National Directorate of Employment on the 18th of April. 2017. On the spot with me, I'd like to welcome Dr. Nasir Ladan Mohamed Argungu. Thank welcome, you very DJ. much, and thank mm -hmm. you for having me. Yes, sir, it's a season for us to, to pat ourselves on the back in, with another democratic uh, uh, process, moving on on the journey, 20, 21 years on, and the administration is uh, marking another season. And uh, for us, it's a sp very auspicious time because uh, uh, the world, of course, and Nigeria inclusive, is hit by the coronavirus pan uh, pandemic. We must leave definitely after the virus, <laughs> and uh, it's going to it's going to abate on its own yeah. too. Uh, as, yeah. But critical for us as an administration, critical for us as a nation, is that aspect of getting the people to work again whether with the new normal or the, the, the abnormal, turning the normal now. Let's take a look at what we've been able to do in job creation and recreation for the nation, even under this administration. Well, thank you very much, my sister. Mm. You know, before the uh, unfortunate incidents of uh, COVID-19, uh, the mandate given to us by the government is to create jobs, provide employment, and we have template on that. Uh, we have series of programs that are on daily, on weekly, on monthly, and on yearly basis. Because the mandate given to us by the government is to create jobs, provide employment through entrepreneurial skills uh, development. And uh, everybody believe or knows that the white collar job is not there. If you look at the number of young men and women that are coming out of the universities, college of educations, and what have you, every year the number is, is, is enormous. And um, we came up with a very good template whereby we can create as much jobs as possible, mainly in the areas of agriculture and ICT because of the value chain. These are areas where you can create millions of jobs 
within shortest possible time. And in the NDE, we are able to succeed even before the advance of or coming of COVID-19 because we avoided moving people. Keeping people away from their localities is always difficult. And the fact that we are dealing with intrapreneurial skills development, we concentrate more in engaging local artisans, master crappers. So what we do in NDE, we give out forms. And just to take you a little bit back, we have been in existence for the past 34 years. Sure. We have, apart from our cooperated office in Abuja, we have six zonal offices. We have 36, 37 state offices, including FCT. Out of the 774 local governments, we have DEX offices in 691 of them. If you are talking of vocational skill development centers, we have 175 of them. Some we built our own, some it was built by MDG, now SDGs, handed over to us. Some were given to us by members, National Assembly, both present and former. Some were fully equipped, some we equipped them. When you talk of agri-training centers, we have 75 of them. We have 10 common facility centers, whereby we build based on what you are producing within your locality, we build, we equipped, and hand over to the community so that they can manage them. And even the so-called school on wheels, some of us that are old enough in the uh, early 80s, uh, late 90s, you know, uh, we have about 26 of them mm. working. And I tell you, within one year, we are able to hit more than a million, in fact, precisely 1,063,000 in terms of job created. But we believe by the time you train somebody on a thread, after he graduated, you did not give him start of packs, you have wasted your time and wasted his time. And that's the reason why we take it mandatory to ensure that whosoever we train, he or she, will make sure that we give them working tools or sometimes with cash backing so that they can be on their own. Okay, so these centers that are created, they're all over the country? Yeah. In the different local government and... Um, or where exactly are they located? Who are, the, who are the people that are taken in for such trainings? You see, there is no parental treatment. We send forms to you with various traits. You only need to pick the trade you want us to train you on. Whether uh, GSM repairs, auto electrician, auto mechanic, tie and dye, furniture making, interlock blocks, molding, POP molding, whatever thread okay. you want to be trained on, we look for a master crafter within your locality who is very good at that. We attach you to him. We give you attendant register, logbook, and ID card. We collect your bank details, including BBN. Yeah. The same thing with your trainer. The only condition you must attend your place of work at least 20 times in a month that will qualify you for you to get your stipends that we paid on monthly basis directly from Gibney's account, which is a government account, directly into your account. Okay. Uh, now, which is, that this is heartwarming because um, definitely it's not everyone will be given the opportunity or will have the opportunity to get into the white collar jobs and offices this day. And if we must look at the requisite skills that will help the nation, we must look into things, everyday usage, uh, st uh, stuff. Let's uh, back off a bit. Recently, at least that is uh, not not too long. Uh, the government had to look into what uh, it's called the uh, the uh, pilot. Uh, uh, it was approved a pilot of a special public works program in the rural areas. Is this still in line with what's already started, or is something different? No, it's not something different. I tell you, my sister, uh, the first one given to us by Mr. President, or approved to us by Mr. President, Special Public Works. Uh, it was early this year, around February, March, and it involves eight states. Uh, Ebony, Edo, Kwara, Ekiti, Jegawa, Katsina, uh, Borno, and other more states. 5,000 young men and women in each of these eight states. 
yeah. 1,005 local governments. It's a dry season driven. Yeah. And each one of them received 20,000 Naira per month for the period of three months. Before the unfortunate issue of COVID, six states are own already. Okay. Edo, Kwara, Ekiti, Ebony, Borno, and Katsuna State. And we have paid them. All the 5,000 young men and women in each of these six states, we have paid them. Paid to do what? They have done the public, special public works. And in fact, the special public works involves cleaning your environment. Wherever you have dirty environment, these young men and women will be engaged to have them clean. We buy working tools and all the light equipments and hand over to them. Where you have gutters that are blocked, they dig them out to make sure they are clean, uh, free for passage of water. In a situation whereby you have your motor parks, hospital, mosque, or churches, you want them clean, they clean it for you. Some are involved in vegetation control. Some are involved in, uh, because we have collaboration with the Great, Great Green Wall, mm -hmm. some are involved in erosion control. Some even planting trees and looking after them. As far as so uh, since the government, uh, uh, the government is paying them, would they need to pay anything to such communities where these works will be taken on? How can we pay you when we are bringing your own children within your community to make sure that they have something doing and they are cleaning your environment? In fact, they are supposed to pay us. No, I was asking if the people there will pay this youth that you've engaged already, which have been paid, for another kind of uh, stipend or other means? No, 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 no. So they w are being paid by the government already to, we are, we are to tackle that? Paid by the government on monthly basis. Okay. Each one of them is getting 20,000 Naira hmm. on monthly basis. Okay. So how do, you, how, do you, how do you get this number of youth in such, uh, how do you locate them? How, how, who, who, who gets what? And how do, you, how do they come out to be identified? Because yes. we're interested because we know mm. so many of the complaints we have usually those okay, are young persons in the villages or in the rural uh, areas and not being engaged perhaps because they don't have the requisite skills. But uh, for, for these ones that you've got, I'm sure they're unskilled personalities and it's a pattern after something uh, that was done in the Great uh, Depression time. Yeah. So, okay. There is no qualification. No qualification is needed. Once you are a Nigerian, 18 years and above, he or she will be engaged and it is so free it's a community based grassroots program mainly targeting young unemployed nigerians so we only have selection process and the selection process it involves people that are capable of doing the jobs of course we give special uh preferences to people living with special with, with some form of disability Apart from it, there is no parental treatment. Yes, of course, we have to engage, like the big one we are going to do now. Part of the screening committee, we have the journalist within the locality. We have the chairman or leadership of National Union Road Transport Workers. We have the, somebody representing, one person representing the state government. We have people from the civil organization to have their representative, the youth organization, and the religious leaders and traditional rulers, just to make sure that we give this thing a human face. They are the ones that live within the community and they know themselves. Anybody that is not capable of doing this job, they know. Apart from that, we have three local government supervisors, apart from the three senatorial supervisors, just to make sure that something is done very well. And based on the success recorded in the earlier pilot scheme that involves eight states, Mr. President decided to approve it to cover 36 states, 37 including FCT. Mm. And I'm happy to tell you, this is the biggest single project ever taken by any government as far as issue of uh, getting youth engaged. Mm. Youth mobilization, it's a passion for you. And we've seen it uh, through some of your other projects and other programs that you have, uh, you've taken on. When we get back from this break, we're going on a break now. Security is one a key area the government is trying to tackle 
how we can do it through pilot schemes like that? you're trying to engage uh, the, uh, this public uh, works program? Let's see if we can actually go through that means as well. We'll be right back after this break. You're watching On The Spot, and my guest is the Director General, NDE. That's National Directorate of Employment. We'll be right back after this break. The coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, has been declared by the World Health Organization as a global pandemic. While clinical trials are ongoing for a vaccine and a possible cure, there is no known treatment for the coronavirus. Nigeria has recorded some of these cases and people are advised to take these preventive measures to keep themselves safe and contain the further spread of the virus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use hand sanitizers all the time. Maintain social distancing. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Practice respiratory hygiene. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Do not panic. Stop the spread of unconfirmed news. Follow the official government news outlets and report all cases immediately. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Yes, welcome back. If you just tuned in, the program is on the spot. And I say I have my guest, the DG NDE, that's the National Directorate of Employment, Dr. Art Gungo. Yes, uh, for, for you, you've walked through some of the schemes in the past. And that was what I said, your passion is on youth mobilization. And you've been able to channel some of this the extra energies into something profitable. Now, let's tackle the area of security. We've seen across the nation, whether in the northeast, whether in the south, south, southwest, from kidnapping, banditry, and some other heinous crimes. And these are perpetrated by the young stars. These energies could be redirected to actually see them through, especially when they will be coming from such communities where these activities uh, take place. How do you see a program like this, Special Works, as well as some other opportunities from the NDE addressing that? Thank you very much. You see, 1,000 people in local government, to me, is quite large. It's big. For each one of them to receive 20,000 Naira per month and what they are supposed to do merely is to take care of their environment. The fact that what we are doing now is a big one. We are in collaboration with about eight other ministries so that we can use these young men and women to look after critical federal government, state and local government infrastructure. Federal Ministry of Works, Federal Ministry of Environment, Federal Ministry of Agriculture, Federal Ministry of Water Resources, Federal Ministry of Health, Federal Ministry of Finance, uh, Federal Ministry of Transport, and um, one other ministry, eight of them. We are collaborating with them. In fact, they have submitted the list of all the critical federal government projects that need maintenance. They even gave us the list, locations, the number of young men and women that are engaged, mainly unskilled, uh, so that we can use them location by location, state by state, local government by local, word by word, wherever there are these uh, structures that need maintenance, we can use them to maintain this. And I believe issue of kidnapping banditry mainly is because these young men and women don't have anything doing. And the fact that now you have an opportunity to earn a living for yourself legitimately, I, I don't think that would be a problem. And those of them that are not lazy, that are sincere, definitely they will key in. But what kind of orientation would some of these people get? Here you are confronted with a large number of youth who are already exposed to huge money for those who take on uh, kidnapping, for instance, demanding huge sums as ransom. You want to come and offer such persons some kind of stipend and you think, okay, well, yes, for some it's a, it's a good thing because morals will always speak. But for those who have already gone on a path that uh, it's as if uh, uh, it's uh, no return, how do you begin to address such in terms of orientation and uh, debriefing? You see, uh, Mr. President, using his wisdom, he said, anytime you are running a program, that involves more than 
50 people you need to involve our religious leaders so that during work there should be at least one hour whereby these religious leaders need to preach to them the importance of living in peace the importance of keeping away from crimes the importance of obtaining a living legitimately so it's not just that we are bringing them at we are also going to engage people that will preach to them people that will tell them the clear truth on the importance of living in peace being your brother's keepers and the rest of them and the fact that as i've said those that are sincere to themselves those that are serious in getting something legitimately we don't have problem with them but i tell you one thing a criminal will always be a criminal mm. but there are still few good ones among them and these are the ones that we are going to work with mainly because we know they are sincere with themselves Okay, that's uh, because the question for integrity is always on our on our yeah. lead for for a nation that is looking towards a rebirth of so many things. Now, does the NDE only deal with employment in government uh, circles or establishments, or do you have collaboration with private concerns when it comes to this? Yeah, we have. I tell you, there are two local governments now in Lagos State. Uh, we are doing a fantastic job for Dangote Refinery. He gave us a job to train those young men and women within those two local government in Lagos so that they can be on their own. We train, he resettled them. Apart from that, we also have collaboration with other private and other agencies. Like we have collaboration with uh, uh, MTN Yellow Clinic to do with uh, ICT. We also have collaboration with uh, OneDial.com to do with mobile money transfer mainly in the rural areas. We also have collaboration with uh, InterSwitch. Okay, so you, are you also open to f more collaborations if, if they come in, uh, if, I they, tell you, if they presently contact you? We are collaborating with the government of Belarus. The same thing with Egyptian government through their embassies as far as training our young men and women in uh, hotel management and leisure is concerned. Belarus mainly has to do with ICT, agriculture and the rest of them. We are in collaboration with the government of Algeria. There is this scientific center for Arab studies in Askia, Algiers. We are in collaboration with them. They are going to give us one million seedlings of deaths. This one is uh, genetically modified, purely improved. It will start production within nine months. Okay. The only condition, each seedling needs about uh, 10.5 liters of water on daily basis. Uh, okay. Where are your, uh, what are your, um, let's uh, look at it this way. What are your concerns post-COVID-19? There are fears already about job losses. And I'm sure the way we'll be doing things will be different definitely from what's manner we have undertaken even before COVID-19 and uh, for this army of youth you are engaging here and there across the 774 local governments they will need to see the things too from different perspective how poised are you to fill in that capacity and that's uh, that vacuum in a short while you see my sister as God will have it at a smaller scale as I'm talking to you now we have produced over 200,000 masks from our various centers whereby we have more than 50 to 100 brand new sewing machines. We engage our trainees and trainers, we buy the materials to produce this thing. We also produce 2,000 as a starter, 2,000 bottles of 500 mils of sanitizer. And these young men and women we are engaging, we are also paying them irrespective of we are the ones that train them. That one aside as i'm talking to you i think by monday uh, the leadership of uh, market women association in abuja came to me sometimes back before the advance of the corona issue that they have about 75 small small markets within and outside abuja they want our help and we decided to pick 20 people per market giving a total number of 1500 we have a program called miss micro 
enterprise enhancement scheme where we give them direct cash backing of interest free loan and they have monitoring of three months before they start paying mm -hmm. and we don't take the money from them it's a revolving kind of by the time let's say we go to a village we give 20 women we source for five attached to them it is only when they pay then you benefit so there is no need for uh, well, are there cross purposes with some of other agencies that are doing something similar smidan some other small uh, some other small businesses opportunities are, are there conflicts of interest in what you're doing or have we been able to bring everyone to a synergy yeah i've been asked this question several times there is no way you can collect money from nde then collect money from itf or collect money from Smeden, or even the end power under the office of the vice president. Mm. It is next to impossible. You know, we are collaborating. The most important thing is to ensure that we reduce unemployment to the lowest bearable level, bearable level. And the fact that using your hands and your brain is the quickest way for you to earn money and big money. White collar job is not there, and it is a lazy man who's do respect and apology that will sit and rely solely on monthly pay. And it's on that note, I'd like to thank you for coming on the spot, Dr. Nasir Laden Muhammad Argungo. Using your brain and your hands is the best and effective way to make money. I hope somebody remembers that anytime they want to go otherwise. Thank you. And that's been on the spot for this week with the Director General of the National Directorate of Employment, Dr. Laden Mohamed Nasser Argungu. And to you, we hope you find time to join us again on another interesting edition of the program with another interesting guest. My name is Blessing Abu.